It's this time of year where I share with you one of my favourite copies of all time. Prepare yourself for Brazil, Fazenda, Cachoeira de Grama, Canario, Pulp Natural. This week we're going to be digging into the archives and watch a badly recorded but very nostalgic review of this coffee. My name is Steve Layton and I travel the world finding amazing and delicious coffee for you to drink at home. Some make coffee difficult to understand and complicated, but here it's my job to make it easy and fun and tell you what's in my mug. Well, I guess I don't really know the episode because this is in the past. Um, this week, obviously, the coffee is Fazenda Cachoeira, called Cachoeira because translated in Portuguese, Cachoeira is waterfall, and that's the waterfall. Uh, huge fans of it. It was a coffee that kind of showed me a lot of what coffee could be at the very start. Uh, I remember cupping it the first time and just tasting this amazing milk chocolate, and this beautiful kind of walnut, and just kind of going, that tastes like chocolate and walnut, and everybody agreed with me, and it was uh, one of those affirming moments that I could actually taste coffee. Um, we were joking earlier up at the farm that this is one of the best known farms in Minas Gerais that isn't in Minas Gerais. Has a production of, uh, has around about 120 hectares. Uh, production kind of up and down, but it's around about, I think it's around about um, 2,000 bags, which is for Brazil, it's kind of big, but not massive. Uh, elevations of like 11, uh, 10,000 meters to 12,000 meters. Has a mixture of varietals, has Bourbon, has Canario, um, has uh, Acaia, um, has Red Bourbon and Yellow Bourbon, not just Bourbon, um, and Mundanovu. Owned by Gabriel Carvalho Diaz, has been in the family for over, over 100 years now. An amazing farmer, has won many, many awards. Uh, won Cup of Excellence, has been finished in the tops quite a lot. Um, very well known, won Illy Cafe's competition. It's just one of those coffees that stands out for great quality and is super, super tasty. Um, so I, I'm going to whap you on pause. I'm going to go and make some tasty and delicious drinks. I might even tell you some more about the farm, the bits I forgot here, uh, and I'll be back with you in just a moment. So you join me just, just on four minutes. I'm going to break the crust, see if I can smell anything. What you're looking for in there is normally bad things. So in aromas, if you smell something bad, it can give you an idea of what's to come. If you smell something good, it can give you an idea of what's to come. But historically, it's done for you know, uh, defect reasons. So what I've done is I've printed out my cupping scores here, and I'm going to walk you through each of the cupping scores. So some people will believe a Brazil can't score 89. If they believe that, they're not using the cupping sheet properly. Because I know that it can, and it, it does. So, going to start off with clean cup. Now, clean cup is how transparent it is, how much you can see in the cup. Now, Brazils are not weighted towards that. They're not a washed Ethiopian or a, uh, a washed Kenyan. Um, and also, it's a pulp natural. So, pulp naturals are going to have a little bit of that clarity gone. But I've scored this a six out of eight. Um, one thing Brazils are very good at is being sweet. And for this, I get like a, a shortbread flavour with it. So I give it a 7 out of 8 because I think the sweetness is probably the best part of this cup. And then we go to acidity. Well, Brazils are never going to be too acidic. Um, but there is a little bit of a peach-like acidity in there. So with that, I'm going to give it a 6.5. Now, because it's a pulp natural, it's going to be very heavily weighted towards having a good mouthfeel because it's going to be thick and it's going to be gloopy. And in this case, I've given it 6.5. And then flavour. Well, I've already said it's got like a shortbread, it's got a peach, there's a little bit of like macadamia nut in there. They're good flavours, so I've actually scored it a 7 out of 8. Um, aftertaste, it carries on. The sweetness carries on. Um, the, the nut kind of fades off a little bit, but you get a little bit more of that peach. So I've scored 6.5. And then balance. How does it balance together? Does it all tie in together? Well, all those flavours tend to work for me. Um, so I've given it a 6.5. Now this is the bit where I can have my own influence on overall. And I love this coffee. I think this coffee deserves a little bit of a push-up. So I'm going to give it 7 out of 8. And then we add our correction score to make it out of 100, which is 36. And that gives it a total of 89. <coughs> So, for me, this is 89 coffee with tasting notes of shortbread, peach and macadamia nut. Brazil's big, isn't it? 
nothing to do with this section, but Brazil's big. Um, this week we're going to be looking at Canario as a varietal, originating from a natural mutation from Bourbon. Um, think about things like Pacas and Mundanovu, which are also similar mutations. Um, it produces more than its parent Bourbon, um, and much more than the red Bourbon. Um, but like yellow Bourbon, it's a little bit more susceptible to pest and disease. Um, it's also a little bit more spindly in appearance, so um, the branches are a little thinner, the leaves are a little less dense, uh, which tends to make it more open to damage from strong winds. Um, and this really has to be taken into account when you're choosing where to plant Canario. Um, Canario was found in the Minas Gerais area, very near to Cachoeira, um, so um, he's very familiar with that area. Uh, it has very close links to SL28, Typica, Katura, just like Bourbon does. Um, and in the right environment, in the right section, can produce really high quality. Um, there is evidence that the lower the yield, the higher the quality of the plant, um, as it can use its energy more efficiently. But with Canario, we've not necessarily seen that as much as we have with Bourbon. Um, typically, the cup characteristics are a brighter acidity than the Bourbon. Uh, while still being balanced and t still typically having a sweet profile um, and lends it very well, itself very well to espresso based coffees um, but particularly those that like a little bit more character in their cup um, so yeah that was Canario look at this for a brew method is there anything finer to take traveling with you than this like it's great you can't break it there's no weight to it. It's disposable. You don't have to clean it. The Cantan is a fantastic brewing method um, that is beautiful for traveling with. If you haven't bought any of these, you should, just in case you're going anywhere and you need to take coffee with you. They are great. So let's dive into the Cachoeira. So Canario, as I talked about in, the, in a little bit before, is... Um, fairly unique varietal to this area. It's a natural mutation of Bourbon um, and it has all the properties of Bourbon. So I get a shortbread, I get some sweetness, I get some white sugar, I get macadamia nuts um, and I get like um, uh, kind of like a peach-like acidity to it. It's delicious. Like this for me is like perfection in a cup. Um, doesn't make me work too hard, doesn't make my palate work too hard but just tastes amazing. Uh, I hope that you agree too. Listen, thank you for joining me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you along for the In My Mug journey. And do remember, life is too short for bad